The features that you see in Blender today didn't come here all at once, actually the opposite. It came over 20 years of testing these features and tools on what the Blender Foundation call open projects. So in this video I will tell you about the most important features that came through every open project, whether it be a short movie, a video game, you name it. Blender's first open movie was a dark and a surreal short that pushed the software to its limit actually, because honestly, it didn't have a lot to play around with. That's why this project was made to show how solid of a push it got, I mean in terms of development. During this project, Blender gained an integrated node-based compositor for fancy post-processing, along with hair and for rendering capabilities to handle detailed characters, and interestingly enough, the character animation system was completely rewritten, and the render pipeline was overhauled to meet the needs of the film. This project basically put Blender on the map, proving that an open source tool could produce a full animated movie, prompting many workflow tweaks and upgrades in Blender's development. But this was just the start. This goofy cartoon comedy brought a lighter tone in a movie called Big Buck Bunny which was released in 2008, and it brought big technical improvements too. Blender developers beefed up the particle system for things like fallen leaves and the bunny's fur, and further improved the hair and fur rendering, making it possible to brush and render millions of hairs efficiently. They also added better UV wrapping, new shading tricks, and tighter skinning and constraints for character animation. This, in addition to an early ambient occlusion feature, which appeared too in this movie, helping with quick global lighting. All these features landed in Blender 2.46, and this version pushed Blender to an interesting level. The next Blender open project is not a movie, yet it is an important Blender open project nonetheless. This was a real-time video game spin-off of Big Buck Bunny. To make it happen, the Blender game engine got a serious update. The team added support for programmable GSL shaders and using Blender's material system in-game, improved the physics engine integration, and even enabled split-screen rendering. In hindsight, the game project modernized Blender's game engine graphics and performance sustainability. Yofranke's game development also led to general viewport improvements and proved that Blender could be used for interactive 3D content, even though the game engine was eventually retired. Next we have Sintel, a darker fantasy short that coincided with Blender's big 2.5 overhaul. The interface got a complete revamp. Blender 2.5's new UI made the software much more user-friendly and flexible, to a certain extent of course. Under the hood, developers introduced a new animation system and improved basically everything. I mean, particles and sculpting tools, shading and render pipeline enhancements for more realism and even a brand new smoke simulation system for smoke and fire effects. Sintel's production drove many of these features and showed off a more polished and a modern blender capable of more complex and emotional stories. Next is a sci-fi short called Tears of Steel, which was made in 2012. It was actually a live action and a CGI hybrid, so it focused on the VFX tools a live action side of things. With this open project, Blender gained an entire camera and motion tracking system, VLMV integration to match the elements with the footage. The project also brought advanced photoscoping and masking tools and a better green screen key note setup in the compositor for integrating 3D robots into real scenes. On top of that, Blender's new Cycles render engine was used in the first time in an open movie, which allowed for realistic lighting and shading. The result was actually impressive, which was a complete open source pipeline for visual effects, camera tracking, compositing, and color grading, all tested and refined in this project, which proved that Blender was ready for some VFX work, at least for personal and small team usage. Cosmos Launcherat, also known as Project Gooseberry. This ambitious short actually supercharged Blender's development in many areas. First of all, it led to improved hair and for simulation rendering, because Frank's this sheep fluffy wool was a huge challenge and got hair blender tools beefed up. 
The team enhanced the 3D viewport with cool effects like viewport ambient occlusion and depth of field, making it easier to preview scenes in real time. There is also a big boost to painting and sculpting, adding features like cavity masks for texture painting and even a first pass to an updated dependency graph for more reliable animation performance. They also integrated a new tag, which were open VDB for volumetrics, Alembic for caching, p tags for texturing, and build two pipelines tools called Flamenco Render Manager and a tracked production tracker to help with production management. As you can see, Cosmos Laundromat's production drove tons of bug fixes and under the hood improvements, making Blender more robust, in addition to being feature rich for complex and long form projects. The next one is a personal favorite for me, which was Agent 327. Operation Barbershop, which was released in 2017. This is actually a high-quality action comedy teaser, which was all about hidden feature film-level visuals in addition to animation. The team utilized Blender's new Blender character rig and tested the new dependency graph to handle the complex character animation more smoothly. They took advantage of Pixar's open subdiv for faster subdivision surfaces on the detailed characters and introduced new interactive viewport widgets or gizmos to make animating and camera work easier. Around this time, Blender also got the principal BSDF shader, making realistic materials much easier. This, in addition to filmic color management for better dynamic range, which were used to give Agent 327 a slick and cinematic look, as you can see. The short basically proved that Blender's render engine cycles with added denoising and shadow catchers could deliver a good rendered animation given the right talent. The next one called Hero is actually a unique open movie. Hero was created to showcase Blender's revamped grease pencil in 2.8, essentially 2D animation inside of 3D software. This demonstrated how artists could draw and animate in Blender, as if it were traditional hand-drawn animation software, but with the benefits of a 3D environment. The grease pencil toolset was vastly improved, supporting layers, effects, and integration with 3D cameras and lights. The short film Hero, with its sketchy charcoal aesthetic, was animated entirely with these 2D in 3D tools, showing off Blender's 2.8 capabilities to handle full-on 2D animation workflows within a 3D animation pipeline. It was basically a fun and stylish proof that Blender isn't just for 3D modeling anymore, and the first time I saw it, it was actually impressive and the developers proved that you can do everything from cartoon storyboarding, animation, and so on, all in one place. The next project called Spring is the post child of Blender 2.8. You see, Spring was a beautiful nature-themed short that showed off all the new tools in Blender's toolbox. The production team worked with the early Blender 2.8 builds, which meant they were using the brand new EV real-time render engine rapid look development and previews. The Blender's UI had been completely redesigned by 2.8, if you recall. You know, the modern dark theme, collection systems, etc., making the workflow smoother for artists. Spring's forest environment benefited from multi-object editing, in addition to collections, to organize the complex scenes, and the characters leveraged the upgraded Rigify Begin and animation tools, while the final renders still use cycles, with improvements like adaptive sampling, EV was crucial for interactive lighting and shading tweaks. This project also continued to refine Grease Pencil used for storyboarding and concept art, and other things. And I would say, Spring demonstrated the power of Blender's 2.8 huge upgrades, from real-time rendering to a polished UI in a production setting, which brought us a stunning cinematic short. On the other hand, Coffee Run, which was released in 2020, was a stylized short film that let Blender flex its speed and new simulation tools. By this time, we got Blender 2.83 LTS, which was in use, bringing features like the new Mental Flow Fluid and Smoke Simulator, a new fight cloth and hair physics under the hood. Coffee Run's cartoony new look was achieved largely with Eevee, taking advantage of real-time bloom, depth of field, and motion blur to render an 80s-inspired city on the fly. This project also helped fine-tune Blender's performance. For example, 
The developers improved Grease Pencil speed and UI further, which was great for sketching out the action. And this short proved that Blender could handle quick turnaround animation and stylized visuals easily, making it great for indie creators who wanted rapid results without sacrificing quality. Next we have Sprite Fright, which is a horror comedy homage to the 80s creature features and a testbed for the first generation of geometry nodes in Blender. You see, in early development, Blender developers specifically expanded the new geometry node system so the team could scatter mushrooms, rocks, and forest debris, and they did this procedurally across the environment, which is a task that would have been tedious by hand. This movie also utilized the Fresh Asset Browser, a library override system, to manage a large number of characters and props in a modern pipeline. The characters in this movie also took advantage of Blender's latest animation tools, and Cycles got to show off some upgrades like fast rendering and viewport denoising. All in all, Spite Fright demonstrated Blender 3 push into procedural workflows, specifically geometry nodes, which is now a very important part of any procedural workflow in Blender. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.